everybody. It's Deb here with Creative Life. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you all are having a great day. And don't forget to press the thumbs up button and also subscribe to my channel. So a welcome to everybody. Thank you again for being here. Today I have a fun project we're going to do using the scrapbook kit from Trace Jolie. Now this is the August scrapbook kit. Now this month's scrapbook kit, you do get a ton of things. Um, my personal favorite um, is the crystal stickers, of course. And then you get two chipboard pieces. One is like a brick wall and then the other one is like a fence. And this is so cute. I absolutely love that. And then you get um, these beautiful Prima uh, little foliage pieces along with the Prima flowers. And then you get a lovely uh, pattern paper collection that is by Uniquely Creative called Garden Path. And this is a 12 by 12 collection pack. So are you guys ready to get started? Let's go ahead and dig in. Okay, so to start, you're going to go ahead and grab two 8.5 by 11 pieces of cardstock, and you're going to cut one of them at 8 by 8.5. Eight Once you cut one of them down, on the right-hand side, you're going to go ahead and just place a half a, a piece of double back tape or your glue, like I did right there on the edge, and then you're going to grab the other 8.5 by 11 paper and go ahead and, and adhere that down to the edge. And this is going to be your cover for your, to start off your box, okay? Next, you're going to go ahead and you're going to need some chipboard. And the chipboard pieces that you're going to cut, you're going to cut two pieces that are 5x5 five five and two pieces that are 2x5. And you're going to place some double back tape on the back or use your glue. I go ahead and I placed my ruler up. Uh, about two and a half inches and then I placed my chipboard next to each other and uh, went ahead and just made it sure that everything lined up correctly by placing the ruler at the bottom. I did leave about a one eighth inch space between the chipboard pieces so there is about uh, a one eighth inch space space between them and then I went ahead and glued everything down. Next after you glue everything down you're going to go ahead and you want to burnish everything in. So I just grabbed my little spatula and went around each of the chipboard pieces and then flipped the paper over and I burnished everything down that way as well. Okay, next you're going to grab your bone folder and you're going to go ahead and go around your chipboard pieces as I'm doing here to break up the fibers. This helps to crease the papers and helps decrease the paper from like splitting. Um, it just makes it a lot easier to fold over. So here I'm folding everything over. And this is going to create little squares on the edges, okay, on the left and right hand side. Next, you're going to grab your scissors and you're going to go ahead and bevel in those edges, just as I'm doing here. And you're going to go ahead and do this on all four corners. Now, this is almost the same process that you do when you create a mini album. So, basically, you're just putting your chipboard on, you're going to go ahead and uh, kind of, I guess, score around the edging of the chipboard pieces, and then you're going to go ahead and cut those little squares off and bevel the edges on the left and right side. Next, we're going to go ahead and grab our tape, and this is the double back tape that I'm using, and I'm just placing that on the edge of each of the flaps. Okay, so um, I place my tape on the edge of each flap and then on the inner side of near the chipboard pieces, I will place my glue along the edge on the inside. Okay, so here I'm just burnishing down the tape and then I'm going to go ahead and take one side, well I guess I take off all 
all sides. <laughs> so you can take all sides off or one side off at a time. And then you're going to go ahead, grab your glue, and then you're just going to go ahead and place that glue right along the inside of the flaps. Now I went ahead and put the backing back on that one side there for the on top of the double back tape, and that's because um, we're going to need that side open. And you'll see here in just a minute why. So as I'm adding my glue to my flaps, I'm folding over my papers. And you, you saw me do the bottom one, and then I did the top one, and now I'm doing the right side one. And here I'm just folding it over, burnishing it in real good, making sure everything is nice and burnished in. Next, you're going to go ahead and grab your bone folder again, and when you have everything folded in and adhered, you're going to go ahead and just crease that again, okay, in the middle of each chipboard piece. And then you're going to go ahead and fold them in, just like I'm doing here. That outside piece, that flap that we haven't glued down yet, you're going to go ahead and when you flip this over, after you're done covering the inside, okay, like I'm doing here, and I just cut these pieces to the same measurement as the chipboard piece. So the the one chipboard piece that's two by five, I cut two pieces that were two by five, and then I cut two pieces of the um, paper five by five. Um, now I did it this way. For me, it just was easier to do it this way. You can try to do a whole piece at a time if you want to, if that's what you're used to doing. Um, I just do it this way because I feel like that way I don't have to worry about any air bubbles getting underneath or anything like that, and it's just easier. So uh, here I'm putting on the five by five piece. Now, after adding the last one on, we're going to burnish everything in, making sure that everything is stuck down and adhered. And if you have any pieces that are lifting up, just go ahead and re-glue them down. Next, you're going to grab that flap and you're going to go ahead and remove that backing, place glue on that edge of that flap and then you're going to go ahead and fold that over on top of the last square piece there just like I'm doing here and then burnish that in and now you're done <laughs> Okay, now we're going to need two pieces that are three and a half by 11. And you're going to go ahead and place an adhesive on the right hand side edge. And then you're going to go ahead and attach the other one to the edge of that. And you're going to go ahead and burnish that in. And now you have one long piece. The next thing you need is four pieces that are one and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. Now this is going to make your drawer. Okay. So here I'm just going to go ahead and place tape on the back of each of these pieces. And then I'll be right back. Next, you are going to need a piece of chipboard that is four and three quarters by four and three quarters. So now you're going to go ahead and uh, adhere your chipboard pieces down on your paper, just like we did before, leaving a 1 8 inch gap between each of the chipboard pieces. Then get your score tool and you're just going to go ahead and go around the chipboard pieces to break up the fibers around each of the chipboard pieces. Okay, and you're just going to keep doing that um, until you get a really nice uh you know, line that goes across. So when you fold your papers over, it folds over easily and you don't have any breakage on the edges of your papers. Next, before we do anything else, we're going to come in and we are going to, I'm going to grab my scissors, but we are going to fold each piece individually. So here I'm folding down each piece of the chipboard individually so they each have their own little score line uh, in between each of the chipboard pieces. You're going to come in with your scissors and you're going to cut a little beveled edge right in the middle. Kind of looks like a little arrow right in between each of the chipboard pieces alongside that score line. So it looks kind of like a little arrow. Um, again, you're just going to cut at a slant 
on either side of that score line that is in between each of the chipboard pieces, okay? So again, you're gonna go ahead and cut that even on the top and the bottom pieces. Here, I'm just gonna go ahead on the edge and I'm gonna bevel the corner pieces so I can have my little flaps on the end of the right side and the left side ends of that piece okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that off on the left side and then here I am and I'm gonna go ahead and bevel over on the edge of the right hand side and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that little square piece off on the end of that chipboard piece okay and um, these are so neat to make you guys I really like making these and they're so they're just so much fun to do I don't know if you've ever made one before but they are really fun to make and such a cute little idea and uh, makes a little nice gift to put like some maybe if you're giving a uh, a bracelet a necklace or something or you know you want to just give like maybe even some cards put some cards inside of here for a friend um, a little journal uh, or notepad and um, these are so cute I absolutely love it so again you're gonna go ahead and bevel the other side so now you have the front or I mean I'm sorry the top and the bottom beveled and you have your sides beveled uh, for folding over okay next we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put some glue down and tape and we're gonna go ahead and fold these wing little wings over the chipboard pieces <laughs> So before we begin, uh, go ahead and grab your bone folder or your spatula or whatever you use and make sure that your paper is creased right alongside of the chipboard pieces all the way around, okay? Next, you're going to add some tape to the edges of these little wings, okay? I call them little wings or you could call them little flaps, um, whichever you prefer. <laughs> but you're just going to add your tape, your double back tape to each flap, okay? And then burnish each one down. Okay, next you're going to go ahead and I'm adding glue to the top flaps only and I'm folding those top flaps over the chipboard only. Okay, you don't want to fold over the bottom flaps yet. It's not time because we have to add the bottom of the drawer to this piece. Okay, so here again I'm adding my glue to the top of the flaps of this chipboard piece and then you're going to go ahead and we're going to fold this over like we did our other piece okay so we're going to go ahead and you're going to um, add this little flap on the right hand side you're going to go ahead and, and push that over then you're going to go ahead place go ahead and fold up your piece into a little box and the little flaps on the bottom are going to be pressed to the inside okay but not attached to anything yet the flap that is on the left hand side you're going to go ahead and adhere down when you fold this over so now it looks like a little square next you're going to go ahead and grab that four by four piece and you can go ahead and cover that and then you're just going to go ahead and add that right in the middle now I took off two pieces. If your four by four piece is a little big, go ahead and cut it down, okay? Uh, there's nothing wrong with cutting it down so you can make sure that it fits correctly inside of your square, okay? I went ahead and burnished one side down first, pushing that little square down, okay, onto the, uh, little flaps that are on the bottom <laughs> okay and then you're gonna go ahead and just burnish everything down and make sure it's all good once you get your piece inside you're gonna go ahead and just push that into your 
uh, holder, your bigger box that we just uh, did, and now your drawer is ready to be decorated. Now for decorating my my box, um, and this is what they call the card holder part or the drawer, okay, I went ahead and cut all my pieces to about uh, an eighth of an inch down from uh, the actual size. So like the size on the sides of the drawer and the box, I went and had at there, I think they're about two inches on the side of the box and I cut it down to like, um, one and seven eighths. Okay. So the border, which is the foil cardstock, and then I put the pattern paper on top of the foil cardstock. And, um, this was so fun. You guys, I love decorating. And so this is one of my favorite parts to do. So I went ahead and got all of my pieces placed together and then placed them on top of the box and the drawer. I absolutely love this paper. This paper is one of my favorites because daisies are one of my favorite flowers. <laughs> And so when I saw the daisies on this pattern paper collection, I just had to use it. And I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. So I knew that I wanted to create this little drawer box card holder. Um, that's what they call it. Um, but I'm calling it a journal holder because we're going to stick a little journal inside of this little box. Okay, so to begin the easel card, you're going to need one piece that is four and a half by four and a half, and the other one is four and a half by nine. You're going to go ahead and fold the four and a half by nine in half, and then go ahead and fold that front piece in half like I did here. Now that four and a half by four and a half piece is going to be glued onto the bottom half of that fold, okay? So here I went ahead and decorated the card and as you can see I went ahead and adhered that bottom half to the four and a half by four and a half piece and I actually uh, went ahead and placed a foil piece of cardstock on top of that four and a half by four and a half piece. Next I cut down a piece of pattern paper with the pretty little flowers on it and I'm using the trim that is in the scrapbook kit. I'm placing that across the bottom and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this over so we can tape the trim to the back. So here I went ahead and grabbed some double back tape, placed it on the side there, okay, and placed it on the right side and then you're going to just go ahead, take off the backing and adhere that trim to that uh, tape. Okay, I'm going to take off the backing of the double back tape, make sure it's burnished down really good, <laughs> and then go ahead and fold over that trim. And um, this trim is kind of like a burlap type trim. It is super pretty. I really liked the colors. I thought they went really well, coordinated well with the paper collection. And um, now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to place some tape, double back tape to the back of this card. And we're just going to go ahead and place tape on the right and left edges and then on the bottom edges and then in the middle part and then make sure everything's burnished down really well and then you're going to take off the backing and adhere that to the top of the card. Okay, so now for the top of the card, I went ahead and grabbed this flower piece from the scrapbook kit and uh, went ahead and just kind of cut off the end of it and then added some glue on the stems and everything and then adhered this down to the top of the card. And I did go ahead and place a sentiment on the top piece and just kind of turned it into like a little flag and it says uh, dreamy days. And it's really light. You can barely see what it says, but it says a dreamy days. And this is a sentiment that is found in the cut apart sheet that you get in the collection. 
And then I went ahead and added some other little flowers to this. And I just thought that these were so pretty. Um, these also come in the kit. And um, so I just took off the backing actually because I didn't want the greenery. You didn't need it because it has greenery from the leaves that are on this flower piece and that we already adhered down. So I went ahead and just um, laid these down on top of that. And I just used my glue and just trying to find the right placement of all my little flowers. And um, I, I think, like I said before, decorating is one of my favorite parts. <laughs> I just absolutely love decorating. <laughs> so I hope that you're enjoying this tutorial so far and uh, get some inspiration from this and create one of these little journal drawers yourself. This is so cute, so pretty. And what a great little place that you can have um, to store a little journal inside, right? Um, that is just like your little secret compartment. <laughs> this is so cute. <laughs> and then I grabbed a butterfly from my stash and I went ahead and placed this on top. So, so pretty. I absolutely love these butterflies are my favorite. And, um, you just placed it right there in there. And then that is going to be our card that's the easel card portion next we're going to go ahead and place this happy place okay and the, again that is going to be popped up okay with some foam tape now you don't have to add the flowers if you don't want to i added them for just an extra you know um scenery on the card and so i went ahead and added some foam tape to the back of those and uh, added those two the um, placement right above the happy place sentiment I thought placing the flowers on here added a really nice like kind of 3d effect because you have the flowers that were on the page on the cardstock right on the pattern paper already printed on there and then I went ahead and fussy cut out these flowers and then popped them up with some foam tape and so I really think it added a really lovely uh, 3d effect on the inside of this card so um, now this will help the easel stand up okay so when you open that little easel card up it'll just stand up just like that and um then you're going to go ahead and place some tape on the back of this easel card okay because no one's going to see it it's actually going to lay down on top of your box so you're going to go ahead and place some tape or adhesive on the back of this and make sure it is burnished down really really good so next I'm going to go ahead and take off the backing off of the card and I'm going to go ahead and place that right in the middle of that top portion of the box. And sorry, my head is in the way. I'm making sure that I'm, I'm centered. <laughs> and I did have this card shortened just a bit. So it kind of frames it is framed in the middle of that box see how it has the yellow with the gold and then we have the yellow and the gold uh in the on the card so it's a real it makes it a really really nice uh look on there and then here i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to paper the inside of my box now i'm just i went ahead and measured everything out and then i cut it down and i'm going to place it inside of there
Okay, so next I went ahead and I placed this little handle that I had in my stash, grabbed my pen and kind of just marked where I wanted my holes, and then grabbed my little tweezers that were kind of uh, pointy at the end, and then just went ahead and poked a hole through this. Now I do have some little brads that I placed inside of the little holes for the handle, and just kind of um, placed those little brads in there and then flattened them out and then um, and again I did this on the back of the panel so that way um, when you adhere your panel down you don't have to worry about poking the holes through the chipboard piece of the drawer so it's already set to go so now it's ready to be placed on top of the little drawer now here I'm placing some double back tape and this is the front panel okay so this has the little drawer pulley on it and it's so cute I just love it it's so pretty you guys and then um, placing some tape on the back panel and then once we're done we'll go ahead and place um, burnish the tape in really good and then we'll place these on top of the drawer. So here I am placing some glue on the back and then I'm going to go ahead and place this little piece, this little panel piece on the drawer okay. and just burnish it in really good. Make sure it's on there and then you're going to place the back panel on. Burnish the back panel on really well. And now you are just about done. Actually, you are done. So unless you want to make some little cards or something to go inside, uh, that is totally up to you. Um, I am going to go ahead and make a, a little booklet to put inside of here. And basically, I'm just covering a little uh, paper notebook that's already been done. Um, I just picked it up from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to cover that and put that inside. Okay, y'all, so we're done with this super cute little easel card on a box. <laughs> so it is super cute. I absolutely love it. And I hope you guys liked it too. Um, this paper just dresses it up so well. And I just think that it's super cute. Super, super pretty. And um, so on the front it says Dreamy Days. And I know it's kind of hard to see because it's like really light. And then we used um, these faux flowers here and here. And then we I put a little butterfly that's from my stash. Um, we definitely went ahead and decorated the inside here. This is so pretty. So I papered the inside. And this stands up just like this. And how pretty is that? Then you can go ahead and place some things inside. Now here, I just went ahead and covered a, a little notebook. Um, I didn't uh, do a tutorial on this or anything because it's just basically covered. The front and the back are just covered with the paper. And then I went ahead and cut, fussy cut out this little basket of flowers, placed this little cut apart card up here, added this little pencil on the side, fussy cut out the flowers, added some of the little crystals that are in the kit, and that is it. That's all I did. It, it looks so cute, right? And then they could definitely, or whoever, you know, you give this to, can just write inside of their little notepad. And then stick it back in their little drawer. And there you go. So stinking cute. Absolutely love it. And um, I just love, I love the gold with this um, daisy paper. Oh my gosh, it's so, so pretty. And I hope that you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I have the um, links down below for you. And thank you guys so much for joining me. Take care. Thanks for joining and me I today. Head on over soon. to Trace Joe to check out their shop. And please like, subscribe, and comment. And come join me for Friday night live shows, Friday night at 4.30 p.m. Central Time.